offered a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. So uh, let, me, let me go to another scripture. In hope of the eternal life, Titus 1 and 4, which God, who cannot lie, promised before the world began. Now, Hebrews 6 and 19, which hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, even that which entered then within the veil, that's faith. The anchor is hope. Going beyond the veil is faith. Because faith becomes a substance that you see Christ who goes beyond the veil of the flesh. And you just don't see the crucified Christ on the cross, but you saw the Christ that got the victory in the garden. Amen. People worship the crucified Christ on the cross and never understand the Christ in the garden that said, not my father, not my will, but thine be done. Yes. Because that's a real revelation right there. Yes. Yes. Amen. He didn't accomplish anything on the cross he didn't finish in the garden. That's it. Amen. When, did you get that statement? Yes, sir. I said he didn't accomplish anything on the cross that he didn't finish in the garden. Right. Oh, man. Amen. 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 Great drops of sweat, as it were blood, appeared upon his face. Yes. Right. Oh, Father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Poof. He went into faith, the substance. He knew his father would do it. He knew that his father would give him the strength. He said, nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. Know what he did then? He went back to his disciples and quit troubling them about sleeping. Notice the third time, he went back. And he didn't go back to the disciples and say, sleep on. He went back and said, could you not watch me in one hour? He was tormented. He was tried. But after he got the victory, he went back and he said, uh, sleep on now. Sleep on, because I don't, I don't really need you. I don't need your comfort. There's no sacrifice on the lamb. There's no water on the lamb. Uh, the, the lamb sodden without water. Uh, to be eaten, uh, not sodden with water. I'm a perfect sacrifice, Passover. Uh, now you go ahead and sleep on. Did you know that same thing happens to me? It's possible that I can go through the roughest trial God ever allows me to go through. And I'll have so much victory that I won't be troubled because you didn't pray or I didn't think you prayed or they were not concerned. I didn't think they were concerned. It will be all right. Yes. It'll be all right. Yes. I want somebody to, I won't, I, I won't be wanting somebody to water me. That's all right, child. It's okay. It's all right, child. It's all right. Whether they say it or not. Whether anybody even calls me or not. Whether anybody speaks to me or not. I'll be in the victory. I'll know it's not my will that his be done. Praise the name of the Lord. Because that's faith in action with hope. Hope we have as an anchor of the soul. Then Romans 8.24 uh, brings in what we don't see uh, and what we see. And verse, uh, verse, let me go down to 24. Uh, we're saved, verse 24 of Romans 8. For we are saved by hope. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that, we see not. Then do we with patience wait for it. Because hope that is seen is not hope. But when I don't see it, but I wait for it by patience, because I have faith, I have a substance that I know God is going to provide it. God's going to make the way. It matters not what men say or how they say or what they don't say. I know God will provide. I know he will satisfy. I know he will supply. And so hope is a wonderful thing, but you have to have faith with it. Because faith is a substance, or hope is a desire. Faith is a substance to know that you're going to achieve, you will be rewarded, you will attain, because you have a substance. How do you know that? Because you know it. That, that's why in Romans, uh, let's, let's go to Romans uh, 5. 
Romans 8, but let's go to Romans 5. Therefore being justified, verse 1, Romans 5, therefore being justified by faith. We have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. So hope doesn't justify you, but hope can save you to get to substance. Yeah. Hope can save us to get to substance. But if we don't get away from just hope, I hope I make it. I hope I can have strength to overcome. I hope I don't let them offend me. I hope that they won't push me back. I hope that nothing will discourage me. That's just a desire you have. It's an anticipated desire. But there has to be a substance for you to know that they won't push you back. For you to know that no matter what comes or goes, whether it's fire burning or blessings falling, you are set. You are steadfastly looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Just like he said in uh, Hebrews 12, wherefore then seeing that we are encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses. All right. Does God need to produce any more witnesses? I don't think so. I think he has enough witnesses around us right now. Amen. Wherefore, seeing them that we're encompassed about, and you know, we ought to even worship more than they did in the early church. Amen. Because they didn't have the early, uh, they didn't have a pattern before the early church. Amen. We have the early church. Amen. We know they made it. We know they were overcomers. Right. We know that they attained. Amen. We know they made it in Christ. Amen. We know they moved out of life. So that's our pattern. Amen. That's our witnesses. Amen. Wherefore then seeing that we are encompassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside a little thing, but keep the big thing. Just some things, but not all things. No, lay aside. Put it aside. But that's bothering me. Put it aside. I can't overcome. That's bothering me. Put it aside. Don't cultivate it. Don't hunger after it. Don't want it again. Uh, uh, but, but, but see, put it aside. Lay it aside. Every week. Every week. Amen. And these said, yes. these said, Amen. that does so easily be said. Somebody said, Brother Marlowe, explain these said. Well, your these said is not my these said. Did you get that? Yes. See, what will tempt you will not necessarily tempt me. But if it tempts you, that's the said that you ought to lay aside. If you're addicted to it, if you cultivated it, if you have to have it ever. 30 minutes, All right. every hour, Amen. every five hours, every six hours, get a fix with it, get a, a hyped up feeling with it, get some relief with it, then that is the sin Amen. that you need to lay aside because that's the sin. See, that's not my, my sin, but I've got a, a sin to contend with. Every one of us have a weakness to contend with. There's not one of us here today, unless you're perfect, if you are, then you don't need this lesson. You don't need any part of this lesson. But, 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 but if, there's, if there's a weakness here, that's the sin that you have to contend with. Only you and God may know about it. Not necessary to confess it before everybody else. But let God deal with it, because that's the sin. Wherefore then seeing that we're encompassed about with such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and these sin that does not easily beset us, that does easily beset us, run with patience the race that is set before us. Then, if you, now I'm gonna go to another scripture here. Uh, in Proverbs 13 and 12, Proverbs 13 and 12, hope that is deferred. What does it do? What does the word deferred mean? Somebody tell me what the word deferred means. Set aside. Uh, set aside. Put off. Put off. All right. Uh, that, that's good. Put off. I like that. Um, uh, uh, put off. Deferred. It doesn't happen. You thought it would, but it didn't. You were anticipating it would, but it didn't happen. That's deferred. And 13 and 12, uh, hope deferred or put away or put aside maketh the heart sick. The heart is your spirit. Did you know that you can 
take hope, lay it aside through weakness, and then you become sick. And sickness then can be unto death. Yes. There's a sin. The book of John said, John 5, 1 John 5, said there is a sin unto death. Say it this way. There is a weakness unto death. Say, some sins lead to death because that weakness finally becomes hope deferred. What happens when you and I no longer can hope that we're going to make heaven our home? Hope that I can love you. You can love me. Hope that God will keep working with me in the body of Christ. Hope that I'll keep the right spirit. Hope that I'll be like Christ. What happens when I begin to lose that feeling I can be? I can be because I know I'm not. I know I'm giving in. I'm giving over. I'm giving under. Uh, and I, I let that overcome my hope. Hope deferred. Put aside. Uh, I watched that happen in the ministry. I watched men that were called in the ministry because, uh, see, every man that's called in the ministry makes a statement, I've got elders around me, I've got ministers, I've always reared up ministers in my ministry. I have ministers all over the United States that are pastoring churches. Uh, uh, that, that came up under the ministry God gave me. Uh, I've watched men, uh, and, and I've studied men, I've studied myself in the ministry. Uh, here's an here, here's area, hope deferred, uh, in the ministry, uh, or a gift. It may be in music. It may be in a calling in the church. And because it didn't break open, but I thought it would. Because it didn't come to the front, but I thought it would. Uh, it, 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 because of that, I would lay it aside. I would lay my hope aside that it would ever be used of God in that gift. But I'm going to say something to encourage everyone here. Everyone. I have learned this in my lifetime. Not one thing that God wanted me to do came to pass before God would allow it. Not one thing. Not one action, not one ministry, until the Lord set its time. Oh, but I've waited and waited and waited. I did too. I had a lesson on that when I came back to Bradenton here to uh, receive this church. And I thought I was coming from uh, Lawton, Oklahoma. Uh, the discharge there of the Army went hurried home, uh, got the wife. Didn't stay in Illinois, but a few days. Had to get to Bradenton. Had to get to Bradenton. I didn't even take time for us to take a vacation. I'd been going overseas 13 months. Uh, she and I had been separated. And I came home, jumped out of an Army uniform, jumped into the car, discharged in hand, rushed to uh, Illinois, said, we're going to Florida. Have to pass for a church. Well, I got down here, and guess what happened? When I got here, Brother Roberts sat here, and I sat down here. And I thought, Brother Roberts, you know I'm your son in the gospel. You know that I've come home to pastor this church. I passed one up in Illinois, congregation waiting, because you said come here. Brother Roberts never gave a hint, never even acted like there was anything in line for that ever going to be. Uh, uh, in fact, uh, everybody received the offering, everybody closed the service, everybody announced, everybody did, and I sat there. He said, I said, Brother Roberts, what do you want me to do? He said, get a job, go to work. <laughs> and so I said, that's what you want me to do? I had this dream I was going to pastor the church, going to look after it. Uh, and, and so I did that because I didn't defer my hope because I knew that God has spoken to me. Now, if you know that God has spoken to you, that's all you need to know. All right. Amen. 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 Can I say that again? Say it again. If you know that now, if you're, if you're, if you're on shaky ground and you're not sure, 
All you have to do is know God has spoken to you about a calling and a gift and at a time that you don't lay aside hope. Don't defer hope because you'll make your heart sick and you'll be a sick man or you'll be a sick woman. But listen, you don't defer the hope you have because God gave you that hope. God gave you that calling. Well, six months went by. I got a job, went to work. Brother Roberts, uh, I said, Brother Roberts, can I uh, meet with you one day and let's talk about, no, son, uh, you need to get settled in. And there we went, uh, month after month, until the day that God said, this is the time. And then the hope in me sprang anew. And I didn't defer it. I, that was a lesson I had when I came back here. I didn't come back here and receive this church. I came back here and received a lesson. And, and uh, I, I, I learned that a God will always help me. And since then, I've had some lessons. And you have. We all have. But listen, don't defer your hope. Your hope is the anticipated desire of what God has in store for you. Then put faith with that a substance that you know you're going to achieve it because God said it. That's his word. You have a gift. You have a calling. And as whatever it is, it could be outside of the offices that I've mentioned in the ministry. It could be another area. But hope deferred makes the heart sick. Uh, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree. It, it is a tree of life. Oh my! When God finally lets that desire come to pass, then that tree of life springs up in you, and you'll do what God wants you to do, and you'll go where God wants you to go, and you'll fulfill what God wants you to fulfill, and you'll be a vessel that God will use, whether it be male or female or in whatever office of the ministry it's in, or even the calling of the handmaids, or the work in the church, or whatever. Just don't defer hope, because hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when desire comes, when desire comes, when your gift is functioning, it may not be in the fullness of your hope, but your faith is there, yes. and your substance is there, and it will come as a tree of life because it will spring up in you the desire that God has given you and uh, it will be uh, there for you to, uh, to, to, to grow from and, and uh, then uh, I, I wanted Psalm 16 and 19 that would be the last one I used in this, um, about in this lesson but in Psalm 16 uh, no I, ha I don't have that I'm, I have this misnomer there uh, my flesh faileth. I, uh, I don't have 16 verses in, in the 16th chapter of, or it is uh, 19 verses in that chapter. Let me look at 9. Yes, verse 9. Verse 9 and Psalm 16. That's what I want. Verse 9. Therefore my heart is glad and my glory rejoiceth. My flesh also shall rest in hope. Let your flesh rest in hope. Don't defer your hope and make your heart sick. Let your hope be the stimulant that leads to more and more substance in your life and see the reality come to pass. I want to talk a, a few minutes on um, the church preparing itself right now. I, if you've noticed, I've gone over this two or three times this week. I, I may have in front of Gordon a little bit, I don't know can't remember right now, but I know I did Wednesday night, and I know I have here. It might provoke a question. If it does, that's good. This is teaching, and uh, it could. But uh, I like to know where I am. I don't like to wonder if I'm on the road or not. I don't like to be lost. I'm a person that I cannot stand it. I get frustrated very soon if I don't know if I'm balanced, I don't like to get up and feel tipsy and my body out of balance. It bothers me. I get up in the morning, can't feel myself balanced. 
Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. That's human, sure. Uh, I like to know if I'm on the highway. I like to know if I'm going where I've started. I like to know if I'm making progress. Uh, I'm that way spiritually. I, I like to know. The only way I can know is two things. The relationship of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, in me. And the other is the Word of God. This is a road map. And then I have the GPS system in me. This is the road map. And I have the GPS system in me. All right, amen. <coughs> you know what GPS is in the Spirit? It's God's spell over you. <laughs> you get your spiritual GPS working. And have God's spell over you. And you'll know where you're going. And then you won't get frustrated. See, Jesus didn't get frustrated after he came back to his disciples and he said, I have the victory voice. You don't have to comfort me. You don't have to go ahead and sleep. Sleep on now. Take your rest. But before that, he was waking them up. Woke them up twice. Third time, that was it. It was enough. And uh, I like to know where I am. I, I do that here with the church. I don't go through a week. And I, if I feel something out of balance in the assembly, I feel something out of balance Monday morning when I start out. Uh, if I see there's a certain trend or a certain direction, it isn't good, it isn't where God wants it to be, I begin to pray, <coughs> seek God, and study the Word. And I feel out among the brethren. I, 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 I try to discern because I want to know where I am spiritually, and I want to know where I am naturally. I want to know where I am spiritually. Am I making ground? Am I gaining? You, you, that should be in you. You are the church of the living God. The church should never be satisfied with what we have now. Amen. Because